Welcome to the first ever I'll be Big Talk, aka I Talk. We will have one of our special guests, an Albi Baker, who've been awarded an EISMA program from the government 2023. So, please welcome our first guest star, Kang Alfie. Hi guys, Dina, thank you for having okay. me. Okay, no worries. I'd like to ask you the first one basic question. How are you holding up all this time? I think I haven't seen you in a while. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, but honestly, I not that good because this morning I just took a painkiller to attend this podcast because I have a little to take that I got. Painkiller? Yeah, I just took a painkiller this morning, but uh, all good though. Yeah, been a while since the last time I saw you, but uh, here I am. <laughs> oh, I see. But why did you have to take a painkiller? Uh, I had this, you know, some kind of a 2K because um, I have this... Um, late to to grow so oh my god it's quite hurt don't worry guys how old, <laughs> how old are we again how old are we again and you just still <laughs> start having a baby teeth oh my god how cute okay but you're all right now yeah i'm all right for now okay <laughs> so this is our is my already guys and i guess you told me that you've been here since 31st december yeah uh I arrived in Indonesia at uh, 31st December, it's 31st. like it's literally off at the end of the year. Really? And uh, yeah, uh, it's been two months since then. I think yeah. it's been around, oh, almost three months. Almost three almost months, yeah, three almost three months. months but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty well, but I do need some adjustments when oh. I uh, arrive in Indonesia, especially when I land in Jakarta, Yeah. where the, you know, it's the most populated city. And, <laughs> Correct. My first impression was, how is this city so smelly? <laughs> oh my god, really? <sighs> yeah, because uh, back in Australia, uh, you know, the, the air is like pretty clean because mm. people is not that, you know, like not the many crowded. People. Yeah, not the too crowded. crowded like Indonesia, especially Jakarta. And of course, as you may know, the international airport is Jakarta. So that's my first impression. Like the city is so smelly. Like I smell, you know, like any kind of stuff, you know, I don't know. Like I can't really describe it, but that's my first impression like how can i hold in this up like I i've been living it, this in it. this country for like 20 years plus and this is how the air smells oh, oh. <laughs> i think we've been used to it but when you got moved into the next uh, i mean into other country and you get the fresh air yeah, the cold yeah. air and yeah. then suddenly the first city you visit is Jakarta. Yeah. I totally get it. Yeah. Don't worry, you don't yeah. seem like a foreigner. It's yeah. normal. <laughs> it's normal. But still, guys, uh, Indonesia is always be my home. Oh, <laughs> of course. Indonesia, Bandung, Cimahi, and yeah. Ubi. Oh, and I'll be back. And I'll be back. We'll talk course. about it later. Yeah, let's talk about it later. <laughs> and before we get to it, let's get uh, to the most basic answer. Can you explain what is the ISMA program? Okay, so EISMA stands for uh, Indonesian International Student Mobility Awards. Yeah. is a scholarship, basically, yes. and it can be participated by the uni students mm -hmm. or uh, some people call it college student here when they're in fourth semester and sixth semester. So it's like a um, uh, one semester study abroad scholarship where uh, the governments of Indonesia. Uh, uh, give uh, gives the Indonesian students to experience yeah. uh, uh, studying and outside the country uh, abroad and any countries that they want to study uh, any kind of fields that they are studying in Indonesia. Yeah. So it is more basically a one semester scholarship. One semester scholarship. One semester scholarship. Exchange program. Mm, not exactly ex an exchange program because Indonesia and the host uni uh, host uh, country hmm. uh, doesn't you know like exchange student oh i'm i know uh, so I it's see, like I see, I see. um study it's abroad not, oh yeah. just indonesian student to study abroad yeah. so the abroad student that's studying in indonesia yeah. so it's not exactly ex an exchange, an exchange program yeah. oh so i see, I see. exchange is like a switching you know like we switch yeah. the students but it is my not exchange it's more like a study abroad program okay. where indonesia send their students to countries and the country is just you know um, um, welcoming the students. Okay, I get it. In yeah. short, ISMA is an 
study abroad for Indonesian student scholarship. Exactly. Okay. So Isma, we talk about the definition of Isma, but we haven't really introduced ourselves. Oh, I think we yeah. get it wrong, but it's okay. Let's introduce ourselves first. Maybe I go first. I am Dina Tritami Faisal, and you can call me Dina, and I'm from Albibek. So our guest star. My name is Mama Ravijelan. You can call me Alvin. I'm from Albibek as well. Yes, of course. This is our head of curriculum, ex head of curriculum, <laughs> and now the staff of curriculum. So the curriculum in Albibek is helped by the Isma Awardee. <laughs> What a big flex for me! <laughs> really, it's a big flex for me. So let's talk about the next topic that everyone is interested about because we've been on me myself on my sixth semester and the other student will be on their fourth or second mm. semester yeah. so it will be uh, a bit not a lot but a bit time to prepare for this program yeah. so can you tell about the preparation the process before you joining ISMA and start from the thing that you have to prepare so yeah well actually at that time when ISMA uh, the 2023 ISMA was open in the registration period I wasn't you know like uh, prepared that well so uh, I was just you know preparing the mandatory thing oh. so well some people maybe um, uh, in other cities uh, they were you know like really anticipated ISMA since like from the last year like yeah. when you want to participate in ISMA in the next year you're prepared from the from this year yeah, so uh, it's been anticipated yeah like, uh, from uh, one year before but me I personally, I only prepared the mandatory things, which was the uh, you know documents, um, documents requirements, yeah, you stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that, and um, the other. Well, most of them are just documents, actually. Oh. So not that complicated, but complicated. Kind of complicated. Kind of complicated. Well, it's not that complicated. More like a like a lot. Of complex, things. maybe. Yeah, complex or like a lot. A lot. A lot of things that we have to prepare, like. Like passport. Oh. At that time, I uh, I didn't have passport. Yeah. And uh, I have to prepare a passport, which, as you may know, passport um, it took a while, you know. Yes. And uh, luckily, I I made it to you know um, settle those documents in time. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of them are just documents. One of them is uh, the essay. The essay. The essay is like basically um, answering question. Mm -hmm. from the ISMA and uh, I don't know for the next uh, period but basically just asking about yourself oh. uh, for example like achievements and your health mental mm -hmm. and physically and uh, yeah it's pretty much it for the preparations yeah. I think yeah not, not that much but yeah it's basically just documents not hard but a lot yeah a more lot. like a lot okay yeah, it took a while so. so you've been preparing your documents like in kind of deadline yeah so when i was registering myself in isma it was um i think it it was minus 14 days minus 14 yeah minus 14 days without two weeks two weeks without oh. passport without any kind of english test certificate so i have to figure out how i you know uh, prepare those documents in this oh 14 days with while attending you know uni oh movie. my god and uh, but yeah, uh, I've managed to you know submit the documents in time. So yeah, but uh, it is it was you know it was it was quite a uh, you know tense for me you know like it was really tense. Uh, I can't really you know uh, get together because I have tasks to do. I have ESMA to prepare. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, it was minus fourteen days. Minus fourteen days <laughs> for all of the. Like, I mean, a lot of documents to prepare yeah, and yeah, all the exactly. documents take time to exactly, complete. Exactly. You've been doing really great. <laughs> I'm <laughs> speechless, like, actually, because uh, I think the one that's been uh, preparing for ISMA yeah. kind of program yeah. have to prepare, like, at least one year before yeah, yeah. the program yeah. itself. But you made it. You made it. Yeah. It's great. Fourteen days. So, uh, I think the next questions I'm curious about is, like, how do you prepare it? in such a period of time, such a short period of time, mm -hmm. and then manage to do it on time. Mm -hmm. And then how do you like decide mm -hmm. which country and which university mm -hmm. you'd like to take? Mm -hmm. What was the reason you take the Aussie and mm -hmm. that kind of uh, like specific university? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
uh, when I was, you know, choosing mm -hmm. the uh, university, yeah. uh, the reason I choose I chose Australia because it's more like a personal reason. Because uh, I was too lazy to learn other language. You know, I <laughs> I totally agree and it's totally really yeah. Like I'm just being honest because uh, my dad. Mm -hmm. was you know um, suggesting myself to you know uh, choose in German which you know uh, I don't know German at all yeah and um, I was too lazy to learn a new yeah. language because as you may know we have uni here we yeah. have classes to attend in OB as well so I chose Australia but if you may ask why don't choose UK or other country that use English as well okay. well because my mom mm -hmm wants me to not too far oh. you know like not goes too far you know like um uh, like usa or uk is oh, like far away it's like 15 16 hours of flight but australia is only like eight eight hours of flight. eight hours eight hours of flight so that's the first reason the second reason is as a you know software engineering student in, in ubi mm -hmm. uh, uh as a vocational student we have to choose uh, the linear program, you know, oh. like the same exact program, uh, study program, so we don't, you know, like cross program, but yeah. maybe for you as the um, uh, the other faculty in Ulbi, the undergraduate, yeah. uh, you can choose, you know, other um, study program. That's linear. Yeah, uh, you can, you can choose, like, you, just, you don't have to use the linear program, you can use, you can choose other program, but for vocational, uh, students, we have to choose oh. the linear program. And when I was registering myself, mm -hmm. uh, there are there are many options for software engineering. Well, we have a lot in Asia, yeah. but at that time I wasn't interested in in, in Asia because oh. uh, I believe the you know the vibe and yeah. everything is just similar to Indonesia. So I wanted to do you know uh, looking for other vibes like yeah. the other countries you know like other continents such as Europe or. Oceania, like okay. Australia or New Zealand, so that's why I wanted to choose software engineering, but outside Asia, okay, because okay. in Asia it's like so many. Okay, <laughs> let me guess. You would like some kind of European vibe, English-speaking yeah, yeah. country, yeah, exactly. but you don't want to make it too far, and then Australia is the most ideal yeah, the most choice. Ideal choice. Okay, exactly. I get it. I get it. <laughs> wise choice. <laughs> wise choice. <laughs> Such yeah. a wise choice. Oh, okay. <laughs> So everyone knows you as a student in Ulbi, mm. but like when Ulbi Bank was formed, mm. you don't really. Uh, I mean, like you've been preparing for your ISMA uh, program, mm. so not all the time that Ulbi Bank has to prepare something that you've been there. Yeah. So I uh, think like I really wanna ask you about this question: Do Ulbi Bank has some kind of role in your journey? Or we just take you for <laughs> take you for credit. Like now, I don't want to make a credit for your achievement because yeah. you truly deserve it. But I really want to know. Yeah, is I'll be back part of it? Mm, well, I'll be back is definitely one of the parts of my is my journey. Why? Because it's more like a personal reason. Because you're not just making me happy, right? No. <laughs> okay. Like it's my honest, uh, you know, um, honest reason. Because as you may know, in my social media, mm -hmm. I posted some photos when I wear this. Really? Uh, jacket, yeah. You, you brought this? Yeah, I, I brought the jacket. Let me show you the picture, though. Okay. I, I really want to see the picture. So, here is the picture. Oh, uh, oh my god. The I'll be back iconic friends in the jacket. Yeah. So, the, the reason I brought the I'll be back jacket is I'll be back is um, one of the more memorable uh, things that have uh, ever happened in my life. Because oh. this whole time, I never, you know, um, actually joined a, a an organization. Oh, really? Even from my high school, I never joined those kind of organization. I was just um, ordinary student, you know. And you can say kupu kupu stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, kupu kupu okay. stuff like that. And uh, <laughs> I was just, you know, um, people don't recognize me in anything. I'm just, you know, going to school or uni just for doing the, you know, lecture class, lecture. Yeah, I don't have any kind of other reasons. You know, but since uh, I'll be back was formed, yeah. and I was, you know, um, uh, I dive into uh, the curriculum. Curriculum division. Uh, it was such a journey, you know. Oh. Even though it was such a quite struggle for I'll yeah. be back to, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, being exist. Yes. It was such a struggle. Yes. <laughs> at that time, I'll be back was, you know, 
almost being drowned, you know. We're like, crawling. We're really <laughs> crawling from yeah. the bottom to the. I mean, like to the average, not yeah. to the top. Yeah, exactly. To the average. I remember at the time when we, you know, host a class. Yes. It was only like a couple of people. It's couple not even, of people. It's not even. Oh, man. In the front of Pendopo, you know. Yeah. Like yeah. we don't exactly have a room. Yeah, for we don't learning. have a room and. Uh, the attendance as well. I remember exactly the average people who attended the Alphabet class was not more than 15. And yeah. it was such a, you know, quite desperate for me. Desperate for you <laughs> and for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally but, right. Uh, yeah, it, is, uh, it was, uh, you know, a motivation. Oh. Uh, because I have to keep this going. You yeah. Know? I was responsible for that. And at that time, uh, my English was trained. Yeah, you know my my English skill because one of the ways that we can train our English, uh, you know, uh, well, yeah, is to surround ourselves with the similar people. Yeah, you know? we have to totally agree. Um, have uh, the people that have the same yes uh, passion, you know, passion, and uh, you know, uh, target vibe. Yeah, yeah vibe, vibe to target. learn English. And yeah. Abibek was is still Abibek is still. Uh, one of the places uh, for me to, you know, being being free to, you know, express myself. Ah, while, uh, thank you. Speaking in English. <laughs> I really yeah, appreciate so, that. Yeah, uh, in it is my journey. It does, uh, you know, contribute a lot uh, because, you know, in it is my, you know, as you may know, we need to use English. And I'll be back was one of my supports. Oh my to, god. To you know. Uh, train my English because we were literally your big fan. You know? <laughs> we were literally your big fan. Thank the, you so much. The first time you like uh, being the Isma Awardee, you've been applauded, right? On your Instagram yeah. story. And you've been uh, <laughs> screenshotted and sent it to me. <laughs> and I've been like forwarding right away to our group. And yeah, everyone yeah, was yeah. so excited because <laughs> we've, we've like uh, a really proud daughter and sons because you're the parents right like uh i know i've been like i've been feeling like some kind of missing pieces mm. missing piece when you were gone because i feel like you were the perfect role for the oh. curriculum division and i think like when you were gone like are we gonna keep this up like mm. this, you set the standard really high at the time oh really and then i've seen your uh division members mm. Your yeah, <laughs> and definitely. they've been learning really, really well. They've been ad adapting really, really well. At yeah. this time, we yeah. don't really have to keep an eye on them. They know how to, how to do it. They know what to do, wow. and they like gain so many ideas, and they execute it very well. Wow. And you, as you can see, like the reason we held the class in Pendopo is because we don't have any room left because Ulbi has so many events at this time. Yeah, yeah. But they manage it to keep the class and make it into an outdoor concept mm. i mean like the improvisation really helps i'll be back to going further and further yeah, and yeah. i think you have the big role of it they learn uh, from you and they say that you are their role model oh, thank you so much so yeah. talking about <laughs> the photo that you've been uh, showing us i mean like i see it on the D the sydney i guess the yeah iconic sydney yeah yeah the photo Did is you leave it? Did in you live there? Sydney, yeah, it's uh, it's a photo in front of the Opera House. Opera House. Yeah, the Opera House is this building, as you may know. So this one is called Opera House. Okay. So yeah, it's in Sydney, and uh, it was a uh, quite a journey to take this photo. Because you don't live there. You because didn't I live don't. There. Yeah, I I was living in Melbourne oh. uh, when I was in Australia, and Melbourne and Sydney is like a really far city different state right different state different as well state. so melbourne is in victoria yeah and sydney is in nsw it stands for Ooh. new south wales so it's like different province as we may call here different province yeah, yeah and it's it was a quite a journey oh. it is it was worth it to take this picture because <laughs> the only reason i go uh, i went to sydney is because I need to take a picture using this jacket in front of the opera house. Are you for sure? Yeah, this is the only reason. If I didn't have that reason, I oh might not waste that a lot of money to work. Oh <laughs> my god. I mean like we we are responsible for your yeah, doing like, no, no, I, I really appreciate it. Like yeah, you yeah. really took uh, an initiative 
yeah. took the picture yeah, because yeah. I asked it, right? Yeah, and you yeah, sent yeah. me the photo <laughs> in the front of Kevin's area in yeah. Aussie in Melbourne, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I need to, I need that picture right now. <laughs> and we will post it in our I'll be back Instagram, right? I'll be back Instagram. <laughs> so, uh, talking about the plane you took from the Melbourne mm. all the way to Sydney, yeah. it costs money, right? Yeah. So, let's talk about the financial. Yeah in a SMA program. Yeah. A lot of people said that you get a lot of money to study there, but a lot of people said that that's not really cover everything. Mm. So what do you think? The real situation uh, you faced mm. there? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting question. So uh, yeah, um, for me and my group, yeah. uh, the financial support was beyond expectation, I guess. Beyond expectation. Yeah, I mean, w more like a beyond, um, you know, our needs. Beyond your needs. Yeah, because it's more like uh, that amount of money was for, you know, uh, cover the yeah, unexpected things. Mm. Even though the governments uh, also provide the uh, emergency, emergency, you know, fund. The emergency finance. Yeah, emergency funds is finance. But it was covered a lot of our, you know, basic needs. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, tertiary needs such as, oh. you know, Vacation, trips, you know, yeah. vacation, vacation, take a picture in front yeah. of the opera, right? Yeah, it's from the government. Um, so the government been providing your photo. Yeah, right? I mean, ISMA is not just about study. You know, oh. ISMA is also about you know exploring. Yeah. the place you know, the place where you study. We don't just study. Okay. Uh, it's academically there. Yeah. We also you know learn a lot of things such as cultural things. Cross culture. Cross cultural things. Okay. Like I said, I went to Sydney for the picture at <laughs> for first. For the jacket picture. Yeah, but <laughs> at that time, I also learned a lot of things about Sydney. Oh, so okay. we don't just, you know, study yeah. academically. Not study. Yeah. But, like, you know, learn. 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 Ah, I see. You the know. difference between study and learn. Yeah. Well, and actually, for the other groups yeah. outside Australia, well, they had their own struggles. Mm. I've heard some of the students had to, you know, well, like you said, the financial support doesn't yeah. really cover all the things. Well, that uh, not really true, but not really, you know, false. False, but it depends on you know the situation. Because I heard in the USA, mm -hmm. uh, they had um, some kind of shooters. Shooters? Yeah, shooters. Like you know, shooters. Yeah, in USA, it's like a common thing, right? Have you ever heard about school shooters? I've heard it, but I I thought it was just a meme. No, it's actually happening. So. One of the groups in USA, I think, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah, they had this threats. Threats? Yeah, threats. Shooting threats. Yeah, shooting oh. threats, especially the Muslims. Oh, the, really? Yeah, the, the girls. They so the rest the, is was real? Yeah, it's like the shooters is real. Oh. And I don't know, it's like um, how, they, how do they handle it? But they did handle it. But speaking of financial, they um quite struggling, I guess. Because I don't know if it affects the financial directly, but it was kind of a threat. For them and i'm not sure some universities requires them to you know pay the the accommodation the accommodation early before oh. they depart so basically the money it was spent earlier oh. you know so uh the expectations of mm -mm. you know like like their financial plan would yeah. be on like below oh. their expectations so maybe because of that you know the they their life um lifestyle right their lifestyle and while they're abroad it's like beyond uh, below the uh, expectations. The expectation. Yeah, so maybe that's one of the re well, that's one of the um, factors that I've heard. Mm. Um, you know, the host universities require them to pay the accommodation oh. earlier. Okay, okay. Well, for me, it's like Australia. They don't really, you know, um, require us to pay earlier. Uh, they, right. they just want to uh, pay before you mm. return to your country. They oh. just want to. Yeah, it's like a different regulations, but that's one of the factors that I've heard. Uh, about financial struggles right. and uh, one of the things that you know definitely mm. struggles your financial right. is because your lifestyle you know like yeah. your de your desire yeah. to spend the money because having a scholarship money is big responsibility you know right. it's like a taxpayer's money mm. so you have to use the money wisely you know uh, you have to make the taxpayer proud like oh. the taxpayer is like yeah it's you guys you yeah, know in Indonesia really. taxpayers and uh, we have to use the money wisely so if you, if we don't use the money my, uh, money wisely, you you will struggle. You will have this financial struggle right. while you're abroad. So yeah. Right. So in short, the uh, ISMA financial support mm. is enough. Maybe more than enough, but yeah. 
at first you may cover a lot of documents pay uh, i mean fee on your own mm. but in the end it's worth it mm. and it's covered by yeah. the government yeah okay uh i guess this is my questions my question on this session about cultural shock mm. i mean like it's a common thing to ask about student that study abroad right yeah so what was your biggest cultural shock and you've been uh, really really shocked and then you can you have to manage it with a lot of time mm. to adapting so uh, the biggest cultural shock is the way we speak to our lecturer oh the manner yeah the manner things okay. so as an indonesian we have this i consider a really good manner right okay yeah really good really manner. polite right really polite. polite yeah but uh in australia yeah at that time i was quite shocked because teachers or yeah. lecturers it, it feels chill, like a friend right? yeah it's really chill 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 like a bro <laughs> like, like a, a bro, bro. <laughs> yeah like man it was so chill and i was it was so chill i was you know like uh, confused because how to put yourself right yeah for example uh I have this experience, this particular experience. I was going to, you know, uh, going to the toilet right. when I was in the class, and I asked the teacher's permission mm -hmm. for me to go to the toilet. Okay. And he was not happy about it because uh, he said, "Why don't you just go?" Yeah. Why? Because yeah, like you don't have to ask my uh, permission if you want to go. To the in his opinion, it it's a distraction, right? Yeah. For his lecture. Yeah, and like uh, I feel bad. Yeah. I feel bad. Of course. <laughs> oh man, he didn't know because. Back in Indonesia, we yeah. do say things like that, and that's one of the uh, biggest culture shock. Okay. But not just talking to you know teachers, yeah. but also like to friends. Yeah, I met a lot of type of people yeah. there, right? And as you know, like as in Indonesian, mm -hmm. we do uh, what we call it uh, like like a really good let's say manner. You manner. Know? Yeah, and the youth, you know, the youth. The youth. Uh, and Australia that mm -hmm. I met. They really just really direct, you know. Really direct. They really direct. Without minding the manner like yeah. we yeah. doing here. Yeah. Right. And uh, for example, for example, I wanted to join one of the clubs yeah. in uni, and uh, they were so cheerful. You know? Oh, really? They were so cheerful. Energetic, and right? Energetic. And <laughs> as a as a people of Indonesia, who mm -hmm. you know, we we do use manners in everything, right? Yeah. We we Without bow our head. It. Yeah, we bow our head. We use this gesture or whatever we make a greeting yeah right? we make a greeting well do, they do have greetings like hey how are you what's up sometimes. yeah good morning how are you i'm good how are you but the greetings is just feels different because in indonesia we don't ask how are you it's not really common in you know yeah. youth you know like young people we don't really ask how are you so seeing people like young people uh, asking how are you mm -hmm. it's like a new thing so mm -hmm. i was confused to you know like response to that okay how do i respond i'm just you know like being sponging <laughs> yeah i'm good like thanks just like that but uh, over time i learned how to you know respond yeah respond, respond. and even greet the people greet back right yeah because yeah if i compare to you know uh the young people in indonesia we yeah. don't really greet people with how are you you know like in indonesia I see, I just see. like hey or yeah uh, just asking or anything random but we don't really use how are you this particular how are you thing is like very new for me so okay. that's one of the uh, culture <laughs> shocks Indonesia, you just have to make your face a little bit up like this. Yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> like simple, really simple. It's like maybe some countries also do this, but not in Australia. Yeah, yeah, but well, well some people use this because, uh, but uh, uh, generally they use how are you stuff, stuff like that, asking how are you doing, which is like a pretty new thing. We don't uh, use that in Indonesia, right? Like I know I for young people. Yes, you know? yeah, it's too stiff here, right? Yeah, but like, when we got to the lecture there, we've been too polite. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we're being too polite. Like, like, what should I, I do, right? Yeah, like I said, like asking permission for you know going to the toilet. Uh, it's not really necessary there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Exactly. So how many time do you have to spend to learn all of that cultural show? Around a month and a half. A month and a half. Yeah. It's pretty short. Well, for me, it's like a long time for me to uh, do because because yeah. you expect shorter. Yeah, amount expect of time. shorter amount of time, and even my friends, the other friends, is you know they adapt quickly. Oh, you don't uh, you don't need to compare. Right? <laughs> you don't need to compare. Know, Everyone needs their time, right? <laughs> yeah. You're doing great. You're one right. and a, uh, one and a half. It's okay. Yeah, one more and a half. Yeah. I think we got this one last question for this session. Mm -hmm. Do you have any fun or silly moments with your friends or your friends doing that you really want to tell mm. us? But you don't need to mention the name. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, this is can be the 
uh, learn the thing that have to be learned before taking the ISMA, especially in a financial issue because this is like such a big thing for everyone. Mm. Mm. Do you have any special story about that? Speaking of financial issues, financial. so when you whenever you got a scholarship, huh? any kind of scholarship, uh, whether it is ISMA or any other scholarship, you have to you know plan the uh, financial management management like well really well because uh, as as a scholarship uh, worthy right we often has you know i have this feeling uh, we call it i call it yeah. uh, the euphoria of getting a lot of money which is scholarship of, euphoria right yeah scholarship before you know like and you have to be wise you know like uh, planning your uh, financial journey like really well because some of my group actually didn't really, you know, um, prepare that financially well. Oh, really? So they kind of struggling at the end of the program. Like, at the end of the program, the yeah, struggle like, hit like a truck, right? Yeah, yeah, like near the end of the program. Like, like when whenever the others uh, has still had mm-hmm. a lot of money, mm-hmm. but this uh, group of people, because they have spent the money like earlier and way much spent than the others, they're having struggle in the end of the program. Uh, for example, whenever the the saving groups mm. ask this uh, the other group yeah the other group to you know like just having a trip mm. or uh, you know eating out yeah they they often refuse because you know they they're quite struggling with the money so my my the point is we have to be wise oh. you know, we have to hold our you know desire desire to, yeah desire to spend money just enjoy the euphoria without spending right? yeah yeah you have to hold yourself you know. <laughs> Uh, I have this uh, term. Uh, it's called the delayed gratification. Oh. Yeah. So uh, you have to delay mm. the you know um, rewarding yourself to you enjoy know? it later. Yeah, to enjoy it later because mm. if you reward yourself earlier, it mm. often just you know make things worse. Oh, you know? Okay. Because before I I got the ESMA scholarship, I was a uh, like I'm not a frugal person. I spend money like so much money just for food. Oh. So when I was in junior high school, I learned this less for my, you know, for my ease, my preparation. Mm-hmm. So when I was in junior high school, mm-hmm. I was, uh, I wasn't really paying attention to my uh, financial, financial support. Yeah, I was just, you know, um, buy stuff. Spending. Yeah, just spending. Here and there. Yeah. You only live once, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, Yolo kind yeah. of stuff. <laughs> and then at that time, I was so young. And yeah, I would just, I spent the money like, most of the money for the foods, you know, mm. like beverages, you know. But uh, after I graduated from junior high school, mm. I realized I spent a lot of money, like a lot, and just for foods and mm. drinks, you know. And it's it was really bad. And when I got the ESMA scholarship, I've already had that kind of experience where mm. I regretted my decisions. You yeah. know, like my experience was not really good. And when I got ESMA scholarship, I I promised myself that. Mm have to be wise with oh. this money and, and for the record it's taxpayers money as well right. i have to you know put this money in a good cause yeah. especially for you know i've been funded by government of indonesia so i have to you responsible. know responsible being responsible, responsible. yeah uh, being responsible with anything uh, you know that includes money mm-hmm. uh, to be you know to be have you know um good impact or good contribution especially for indonesia right so your regret came on time. <laughs> yeah. At yeah. the right time. My regret came on time. Yeah. You know, before before I... you took the ISMA program. Yeah. Yeah. If your regret comes after you took the ISMA program, maybe this will be a different story. Yeah. Yeah. This will be a different story. <laughs> this yeah. will be a different story. <laughs> I guess that was the last question for our first session. So we've been preparing uh, the next session that will be have a like spinning wheel. Oh. For the list of questions okay, I keep on my pocket, <laughs> so this will be a burning questions kind of uh, kind of stuff. This is not really burning, but <laughs> this way more I mean interesting than the other common knowledge about isma that you can take anywhere. Mm-hmm. So we will spin the wheel, mm. and the number will show me t- uh, which question I will ask you. Okay, can I get the spinning wheel? Thank you. So. Okay. Without any cheating, without any cheating. Okay. We will spin this. Let's see which number you will get. Eight or seven? <laughs> uh, it's eight. It's eight. Yeah, it's eight. Okay. You got the eight questions. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's see. see. <laughs> Are you there first? 
Um, because I do. <laughs> I am the one who gets nervous. Kind of. Okay. I I didn't know the question because our team prepared it. Oh, okay. It's not my question. Oh, okay. It's not my question. It's I'll be back's question. Okay, okay. And you know they were so random. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. warn you, they were so <laughs> random. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's not really burning. You're lucky. Hmm. Do college students there enjoy hanging out or socializing? They got like nongkrong nongkrong here, hmm. similar to Indonesian students like in the front oh, or warna out. or pancong like that. Okay. Mm, I can say we have similar things. Similar things. Yeah, we have similar. So they things. enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. they do hang out. Oh. They do hang out, but they often hang out uh, in like in the campus area. In the campus area. Yeah. Not really far away from the campus. Yeah. Uh, well, if we if you, if you know uh, the question, if we compare it to you know when we're here, mm -hmm. will be we often hang out with in you know like some kind of. Mm. Um, food resto or anything oh, like that. Okay, but cafeteria. yeah, but they usually often hang out in the park. Oh, in the park. Yeah. So they brought their own food. Yeah, and you know, like doing picnic. Oh, doing picnic. Yeah. Wait. So they just lay down on the grass, you know, talking to each other. I mean, it's fun, right? Yeah, it is. It is fun. So, like I said, it, we we have similar things, but it's just different places. It's know? way more fun. <laughs> it's way more fun. It's way know? more fun and with the fresh air and yeah, something. Yeah, the fresh air because yeah, they 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 prefer you know hanging out in the park, you know, laying down on the grass, um, you know, watching people playing basketball while oh. talking to each other and, and then uh, joining the basketball, yeah, like some kind of fun match, right? Yeah, fun match. I and, saw your you know. story about that. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I posted a story why where I play basketball, but uh, it's pretty fun because the people there, when they hang out, you know, you know um, students, when they hang out, they really appreciate their time, oh. you know, like, they do use their time to, you know, talk to each other. Oh, quality you know? time. Yeah, yeah, like, as far as I know, yeah. um, they do use their time uh, wisely to, you know, doing, you know, actually mm. getting to know each other. You oh. know? We do ha also hang out in the apartments. Mm -hmm. Because I live in an apartment, we have this communal area. Mm -hmm. Like people can hang out there. Like in this communal area, we have like pool, pool table. Oh. Yeah, pool table, and like the ping pong table, where we can you know just hang out. Okay. And we have a lot of bookshelves, uh, you know, to you know study together. So yeah, we we do often hang out, but they don't really hang out in you know food places. Oh. Yeah. If they go to food places, they just eat. Eat. Yeah. So they eat will be different with having some quality time or yeah. having a non crong time. Right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now I want to live there. Yeah, so we <laughs> different. Yeah, there. we different. Yeah. A place to eat, a different place to, you know, actually getting to know each other. Right. Yeah. Here is the same place. Like yeah. you can eat, you can talk, and you can play yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. But that was more different there. Okay, I see. You answered the first question well. Mm -hmm. Let's move to the next question. Next can question, we spill, yeah. I mean, spin okay, which number see. we will get? Which number? Uh, I believe it's, I gonna believe be it's three. three. I think it's three as well, right? Yeah, it's three. It's three. I expect some kind of burning question, guys. Okay. I trust you on this because I haven't opened this myself. The third question. Oh, it's kind of interesting. Hmm. The most important thing to bring daily aside your phone, laptop, and wallet. Daily. Kind of. Daily. You bring it anywhere. Hmm. For me, it's my hat. Your hat. Yeah. Why do you need a hat? Because in Australia, the sun is really hot. Really hot. Yeah. The weather is cold, right? Well, for the cold season, it is cold. Mm -hmm. But for the hot weather, I have to, you know, I guess it is mandatory for me to use hat because oh. they have this term called heat wave oh. where people can faint. Can faint? Yeah, while they're walking. Oh, I know it. Yeah. I, I've seen it on the internet before. Yeah. So the, the sun is, I don't know how, but... The sun compared to Indonesia, mm -hmm. even though we have the similar temperature, oh, let's say 35, 36. Okay, it's common here, right? It's common, but the humidity of oh. the air here protects us. Okay. Right? So even though people in Indonesia, you know, just wearing a t-shirt and yeah. you know, shorts. A hoodie. Yeah, a, a hoodie, hoodie like a hoodie, hoodie like, in Bekasi. Yeah. Can you imagine it? Like, yeah, in Indonesia. They've been fine, right? Yeah, but in Australia, we can't really, you know... Um, uh, expose our head to the sun directly because it is really hot. Like I don't know why, but some people call it because the ozone layer is thinner mm -hmm. oh, in Australia. So it's not humid there. Um, not really humid. Yeah, because really the air is quite dry. Oh, yeah. So 
I often, you know, my my lips. Huh? My lips is getting dry. Getting dry. Yeah, so that's the difference. Yeah, that's one of the stuff that I have to bring daily. Uh-huh. When I go outside, right. it's my hat, you know, or a cap, because it protects our head. Okay. Or some I people see. use umbrella, but oh, really? yeah, some people use umbrella to protect themselves from the sun, but mm-hmm. often just use, you know, hat. The hat. Yeah, okay. the hat. So that's mandatory. why. So that's why they've been asking you about your mental and physical condition before you exactly. took yeah. the country and yeah. the university. Yeah. 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 Okay. Speaking of the daily things mm-hmm. that we have to bring every day, uh, for this cold season, mm-hmm. well, we need to wear this stuff. Some people call it long john. How many layers? Yeah, did you um, have? for me, uh, first uh, because in Indonesia I live in a cold place. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that time, I thought I was strong enough with the weather, but when I when I got there, the weather was so cold. Like it was like the average was like ten or nine degrees mm. Celsius. And different kind of cold, right? Different kind of cold, yeah. I think I usually wear three layers of three layers. Three three layers of clothing, especially when I went to the mountains when mm. I visited the snow. Oh, um, you can be experiencing the snow. Yeah, I I have the video, but I have to look for it first. But uh, you have to send us everything. <laughs> I'll send <laughs> you, you send later. I'll send you later. Okay. I wear. I think around five layers. Five clothing. layers yeah. when five you get layers. to the mountain. Yeah, it was minus two degrees of Celsius. Oh my god! It was so cold, but uh, yeah, in the cold season you have wear this stuff. I call it cold? long john. Yeah, cold. Some kind of cold. No, no, it's like a bumper. Inner, inner oh, wear. Inner know. wear. Yeah, it's like it's like leggings, but oh, it's one set you can say. No, no, no. It's like temperature clothing stuff oh. you know like uh, usually japanese have this best clothing oh, but because they have the yeah, cold weather yeah they uh, i bought this stuff like the japanese brand but i forgot but it's like the temperature clothing stuff i don't mm. know it's not like you call it manset or anything but it's like a full wear uh dress mm. well, no not dress but like clothing it warms ah, your body so even though yeah. it warms your body using your body temperature uh we call it long john was it really helpful for you um yeah we w- we need to use it. We need to use it. Even even when I when I was sleeping in my own room, I use it. In yeah, winter, right? Yeah, in winter because it was so cold. So in the cold season, we use long john. We call it long john. In the hot season, we use the hat. The hat. Okay, yeah. it's enough for you, right? Yeah, it's enough. Have you ever get sick because of the weather? Um, not really. Well, I do got sick once in mm-hmm. Australia, but it's more like a because of my lack of time management. You know. Uh, yeah. you've been. Pushing yourself so much at the time. Yeah, because so. you know a lot of task Tasks assignments, even friends to you know hang out with. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> your body, your body finally gave up at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. Second question. Let's okay, move let's... to the third question with third the question. spinning let's wheel. See. Let's see which number, which number will we get? What, what number? It's nine. It's nine. Yeah. Okay. It's nine. Let's see what was the ninth, the ninth questions. Okay. Oh my God, it's so interesting because um. I'd like to know: Is there any kilo lecturer, doesn't kilo? Oh. While studying in Melbourne. Kilo lecturer. Kilo lecturer. Weird Street. terms to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Indonesian terms to say. Yeah. So uh, yeah, actually, I had one. You had one. Yeah, I had one. This particular, we call it tutor. Tutor. Yeah, tutor. Not a lecturer. Not a lecturer, because there are three different types of teacher. Oh. So lecturer, tutor, and the convenor. Convenor is like the head, oh. the head of the course. Convenor. The convenor. Lecturer. The lecturer and the tutor. Tutor. The tutor is like the same. Like a mentor, right? Yeah, it's like a mentor. Like a, mentor. Like a mentor. So I have, I had this tutor. Um, <laughs> if if one of my buddies watching this, you probably know who I'm talking about, but. What if the tutor would it push it himself? Uh, I believe he's not gonna aware of it. Okay, <laughs> okay good for you. Yeah. You're safe. So this tutor was really, you know, uh, ignored. 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 Hard to approach. Hard to approach and so you know, kind of you know, like rude. Rude. So, uh, man, this is quite a sensitive topic, but he was quite rude because when when he talked to you know boys right he was being rude but he when he talks to girls Girl. he was suddenly you know being so nice man i was so upset because uh it's like it's kind of you know irritates me uh, every I time think... i ask question even asking 
or you know discussing about my wrong answer to him yeah yeah he some always, kind of evaluation right? yeah he, he always says like this you have to think <sighs> like how am i supposed to think if i can't think you know right so if i didn't know what did i get wrong right? yeah yeah like but uh yeah it's pretty much it because he was just you know being ignorant oh, being ignorance. Ignorant. Yeah. So ignorant. but yeah it's quite you know uh being discriminated but when he talks to girl it was just so nice like even even me the boys in okay. class we were like man look at him bro look at him when he talks to that man like a, a total different um approach you know a total different five people a, a total different five total different person like uh, man how like oh man but yeah that's that's one of my twitter man but yeah uh, he's he was still one of the memorable twitter because memorable because he was he was that killer yeah he was, <laughs> he that, was that oh killer. irritates me but he taught me really well uh, yeah, he taught me really well so this is not only happened in indonesia <laughs> you can find this in australia yeah. as well in any, in, any, in any other countries i believe yeah yeah i see because like i thought the killer lecturer mm. or mentor or tutor is only exists in indonesia because everyone says that like you said before the lecturer the tutor there is very welcoming and easy to approach chill most of them yeah most of them <laughs> and then there are i mean there was there few, a few people yeah. there was few people there few like people but uh yeah they're still considered friendly but not as friendly as the other okay yeah. so it's still 50 50 guys not 50 really i think 70 30 yeah 70 30 because most of them are just friendly mm -hmm. just like in indonesia okay <laughs> i think we have one last question because last this question. is one last question i won't spill it Okay. I won't spin it because I will pick one okay, of my favorite particular questions. Particular one. Okay. Particular one. You have to answer this honestly. <laughs> okay. This, this is, is the first question, right? Kind this of. This is the first question. I don't know why did they bring this to the top. Kind of intimidating. Besides academic things in LZ, is there any romance thing or any oh. Melbourne students you okay. like the most? Any Melbourne students you like the most? Some kind of crush, romance oh, thing. Oh, okay. That was this was their question, right? Not my question. Okay, okay. <laughs> Look okay. at their smile. <laughs> Look at their smile. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'm afraid that you are the one who asked. <laughs> okay. Any romantic things? Ah, uh, I actually had one. Oh, <laughs> this one. This one. Uh, so it's this pretty one. more memorable. I mean. Drop a name right now. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Drop her username no, no, no. right now. <laughs> we will switch it out. <laughs> I actually had one and it was also isma already oh really yeah it was isma already not not the locals because it was so hard to approach the locals oh so i had a crush with one of the isma already and uh it was it was in the different uni different uni different yeah. country from you no, no not, in, not in indonesia in indonesian the, in, no, no yeah indonesia indonesia isma oh. already so it must be indonesia <laughs> okay so <laughs> yeah and this uh so i ha i knew this girl from you know before departure mm -hmm. so we had this task from isma we have to create a content about mm -hmm. sustainability mm -hmm. and um i knew this girl okay online at first at first it was online and okay. uh, you know i just you know i thought she was kind of good and then that's it <laughs> and can we bold this she's kind of cute uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's kind of cute and then and uh, yeah that's that's it at first and then when we depart to you know in uh, to australia and i wasn't thinking about her i okay. was yeah i was dis too distracted to my groups because okay. i'm a group leader and uh, for any stuff like task assignments even at that time i was doing some kind of work in indonesia mm. so i have doing it online from australia okay. i was too distracted and then uh one time we had this isma gathering oh. like melbourne isma isma melbourne and uh we had you know like gather uh all isma mm -hmm. were this in melbourne mm -hmm. and i met this girl yeah where finally yeah which that which which the one that i said you, you know she's gonna cute. cute and so on yeah. i met this girl and you know suddenly all of my you know like task and everything was forgotten I was, oh, oh my god i was like so what okay i was like oh. but yeah she's the one that i you know adore yeah online and 
Yeah, and then uh, we uh, we had, you know, uh, some kind of a. I believe you played cool. Right? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I did. Cool. I did. I did. <laughs> I did play it cool. And uh, uh, at this gathering, we visited some places, mm -hmm. and one of them is the Melbourne Museum. Okay. And when we visited the Melbourne Museum, somehow, I, uh, uh, me and her, mm -hmm. I and her, her and I, was separated from the other groups. Oh, like, uh, this is your imaginary no, scenario, right? No, no, no. It's, it's it one of your plan, right? <laughs> it's one of your plan, right? <laughs> no, no, it was in my <laughs> okay. No, it was, a, it was just like uh, spontaneous. Because, uh, at that time, we were uh, like, we were um, uh, kind of separated. Hmm. And, you know, in museum, people have their tendencies to see, uh, you the know, things they like, the things right? they like. And, at that time, uh, you know, uh, coincidentally, I had the same interest with her, you know, Aww. like seeing things in the museum. Right. At that time, I was looking at, you know, like planetary things. Right. And yeah, at that time, it was just me and her. And I was like, oh, it's like, uh, you know, because it's been a while since the last yes. time I had that kind of stuff, you know. Okay. Um, and uh, we really, you know, like, uh, strolling around the museum and for me it was such a good time because okay. you know it's been a while since last time I had that kind of feeling you know like the things that I can really you know explain you know when, when maybe we can call it a crush but uh, yeah specifically a crush and yeah it was that thing was kind of distracting me for a while for a while yeah but for, it's a normal thing to have right yeah but I wasn't expecting that thing yeah <laughs> Yeah, I was just, you know, studying yeah. and, you know, doing the things that I have to do. Having fun with my friends, having right? Having fun with my friends, <laughs> not, you know, having this kind of Romance feelings. kind of thing? Romance kind of thing, but not really romance. Oh. Because... It's just a crush. Crush, yeah. And then stun crush. Yeah, yeah, I played cool. And uh, she was just... She was also, you know, um, pretty nice, you know, to me. Like, you know, it's... Boys thing. Ah, I guess, I guess. Okay, boys yeah. thing. So I won't really write, but I can tell her right now. <laughs> I can tell her right now. Did, did you still have touch? Like, I mean, keep in touch with keep her? Keep in touch with her? Not really. Not really. Oh, I uh, really wish you watch this. Because. Yeah. I really wish you watch this. <laughs> I will drop a link right now. <laughs> I will drop a link right now. So that was pretty uh, memorable for you. Yeah, it was pretty memorable and it uh, kind of awakens something inside uh, of me because it's at, been buried a long yeah, time yeah because at that time i was you know too idealistic uh in terms of you know um being close with a uh, girl you know because uh at that time i was having this mindset where uh girls just a distraction you know? yeah so uh you just want to focus on yourself yeah right? yeah i was at that time and then and then i met her and then i realized that um, maybe i need yeah one but uh at that time uh the uh the, situ the situation is yeah. just was just not really you know um good supporting yeah supporting me to you know uh doing such a thing you know, okay while i'm there you need someone but not exactly on that time right? yeah yeah exactly but, okay uh, it's yeah. almost there we're almost there we're almost all in the end of our semester and then you get your career and then you can focus on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i hope but it's really <laughs> add one more color to your journey right yeah so exactly. it's so yeah. many colors in yeah. this journey teaches me a good person right i think that's gonna be the last question mm -hmm. you're really good at picking questions <laughs> i really appreciate this i guess we need to have that kind of question at first because mm. it's important, right? Okay. We need to drop a username right now because... No, 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 please. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Sure so, I guess that was gonna be the last uh, talk with our Isma already, our curriculum ex-head of division, our beloved Kang Alvin. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you so much for attending this, I mean, like a mini podcast. The Thank you I'll so be much. back first. Thank have, you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for having I'll be back as one of your supporting journey in... I'll see. Thank you so much My for the pleasure. picture. <laughs> we will upload it on our feeds. Okay, guys? We will upload it on our feeds right away. Thank you so much, Kang. It's such a good time. It's Thank really, you so much for having me. Uh, okay. I think that's all from our first ever podcast. I'll be back. Always be one. Goodbye.
See you later.